Those franchises are terrible. The modern incarnations of some of these franchises that have been around more than 20 years. And aside from student debt, let's suppose someone has been fortunate enough to have their education entirely covered. Let's talk about the over-reliance on an alma mater. I went to this school, therefore I deserve a job. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Uh, the alma mater thing, being part of a club, I don't know. I, I, I always, but see, I'm a person that I, I, I can meet almost any stranger and find some level of connection. You know, we're both parents. You know, we both love cats. We have a love of uh, Frank Herbert. Uh, or, uh, you know, like I can find some connection. I like football. Uh, just because, um, y you know, I, I like watching live sporting events where there are stakes involved, you know, um, um, but I don't take sports all that seriously. I do think that those club connections, that is one way to connect, but when it comes to people, almost any type of person, I can find a way that we all connect. Um, uh, so yeah, I do think that there's maybe an over-reliance on that as being part of a club. Um, but I think that there's so many different ways to connect with people, whether it's, you know, a shared passion for food or film or, you know, um, maybe a place like, uh, you know, the Chug and Monkey bar in Austin, Texas on 6th Street. I don't know why that popped into my head, but <laughs> I love that bar. Um, so, so, like... You know, just because I am a person that loves to connect with people, like I'll find some way. I do think maybe there is an over-reliance on the alma mater being the thing. Um, I tend to connect with people. The easiest way I connect is through a passion for film and all types of film. I really am. I do think it's important that we have a balanced media diet. Oh, what is that? A balanced media diet is absolutely critical. In the same way that what we put into our bodies is just as important. If you lived only on fast food, say Hollywood blockbuster movies, I find that, um, first of all, if you only ate McDonald's, there's already been a movie made about that and it doesn't do good things to your body, right? Like fast food, greasy food, not good for you. Balance. And I feel like we don't pay enough attention to our media diet. And the media diet has to be, yes, fine, I'm gonna go see that Marvel movie, right? I'm gonna go see that movie that, a lot of movies these days, they're just like theme park rides. They're not movies, right? They're, they're selling products. And I'm gonna balance that out by seeing a really amazing documentary or a small independent film made by a filmmaker I've never heard of, put out like by a Gravitas Ventures or something, or a 1091, or A24, one of these other companies, well, A24 is Warner Brothers, that's another story, but. The Orchard. The Orchard, yeah. A24 is very good taste, if you ask me. Oh, they do, yeah. I, I, I really do love their, the, their, how they curate the films that they put out, or an IFC, right? Participant, like, yeah. Yeah, like, like have a balanced media diet. If you, there's a whole group of YouTubers that are on, that, that have made a living shitting on giant franchises. And I say, I agree with, first of all, I agree with many of them. Those franchises are terrible. The modern incarnations of some of these franchises that have been around more than 20 years, they've, they've sort of run it into the ground. Um, but I feel like maybe you wouldn't be as, as upset about them if you had a balanced media diet. Meaning, meaning, yeah, I'll see the latest whatever forgettable big blockbuster movie, but because I have seen some smaller film, this is a weird example, Psycho Goreman, um, <laughs> you know, or um, a movie, a documentary, I would highly recommend called Clapboard Jungle, which is about, um, it, it's about a filmmaker's journey, uh, trying to, you know, actually find a way to make money in this in crazy industry, I think you need to have a balanced media diet. And that's at least what my mission is with Film Thread is we tend to champion filmmakers who make these smaller movies because there are plenty of other websites that cover Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, Disney, right? Um, those are all one company, if I, right? Marvel, Pixar, Star Wars, Disney, that's all one company putting out the stuff that really is a monopoly. It's, un, it's, it's unfortunate that these big blockbusters have that. Um, but, but 
it, it, those are okay to see, but you should not only see those. It, it's just like, you know, with, with it, like see one of those and then see a smaller film. See one of those, see a documentary. See one of those, see another documentary. Like break it up and really look like whether it's like you're scrolling through iTunes or Vudu or whatever, one of those services where you can purchase or rent movies and look at the, you know, video on demand stuff that's just come out. You're gonna find some incredible stuff. And, and that's where I feel very fortunate. And that's part of our mission um, is to say, look at these movies, because if you only lived off the giant franchise films, you will find only disappointment. And so, and so break it up a bit. Maybe you won't be as upset about that. So um, ha have a balanced media diet. So there's four food groups right. and there's four like, you know, you have your yes. blockbusters, you have your documentaries, you have your art house, and then maybe something with subtitles. Of Abs, film. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I actually, you know what, I will say this. I put subtitles on when, when I don't have to because you learn so much. When I watched Game of Thrones, I knew all the characters' names because I watched it with, with the closed captioning on. Uh, it's great. It's it's really it's really fantastic. So I, I re actually recommend closed captioning, even if it's a film that's in your the the language that you're familiar with, your native language. It's, it's uh, you, you you you'll you'll learn more um, because especially because a lot of it is like you'll get some of the direction that's directly out of the screenplay, right? Like like it's really useful. And thinking like a writer, I think that watching a movie with closed captioning on in English, even if you are an English speaker, is really useful. Uh, so I tend to do that. I don't know, is that, I don't know if that's a thing, I do it. Uh, my thing, my, I have friends who think I'm crazy for doing it. I find it incredibly, um, you'll learn a lot more about what you're watching. I know my limits. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not, you know, and I tend to go towards my strengths. And, and when I did stand up, I don't think that that was, while I'm comfortable being in front of an audience, uh -huh. um, when I saw the guys that were really good at it, I was like, oh, the amount of effort, like, it just was not for me. And then, and then additionally, um, Hecklers too. Well, it's not the hecklers no. so much. That I didn't mind, hecklers or people in the audience. That, that, it, the crowd work is fun to me. Um, I love crowd work, mainly because I like people more than anything. I love, you know, I just love people. Uh, I, I have now become my grandmother, where I have conversations with people in grocery lines. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's, I'm, I've become <laughs> that guy. Uh, but, but. Um, Are you the ones having the conversation, sorry to interrupt, with the demo people? The demo people. You know when they do the free samples? Oh, no. You know you've really crossed over when you're yes, having like an hour no, long. No, that I tend to like, <laughs> no. But I'll like, I don't know. I just, I you know, um, I feel like it's like getting out of our social media bubble. I think you, if you only read social media and especially Twitter, which I think is horrible, horribly toxic and not a representation of real life. Um, I, I think if you just go outside and talk to people, all of the vi the vitriol, um, it's not there. People face to face, speaking face to face, um, you know, there there there's more that's communicated, you know, um, by looking in someone's eyes. And I think I think um, I think unfortunately, social media has has brought out so many demons. I mean, maybe it, maybe it's a good thing in the sense that those demons are online and then they don't exist in the real world as much, but um, we're living in some really bizarre times. If, you know, I don't, I think that's an understatement. Um, yes, now see, I'm the one going off on tangents.